Book of Heaven, Volume 22, Part 9. September 3rd, 1927. Until the soul lets the divine will reign, she will always be unhappy and restless. Diversity of martyrdom of soul and of body. I was crossing the sea of light of the divine fiat, following its acts. And oh, how I comprehended that all good is in it. And my always lovable Jesus, moving in my interior, told me, My daughter, until the creature comes to letting my divine will reign within her, she will be always unhappy, always restless, because as good, holy, learned, and rich as she may be, she will feel within herself that she lacks the fullness of happiness and the sea of peace, which are such that from no side may she be disturbed or her happiness broken. So she can only be happy by half, and her peace will be halved. And because it is not whole, the half that she lacks will keep the way open to bring unhappiness and disturbance. See. This happens also in the natural order. Someone is rich. He lacks nothing. He possesses his ten, twenty millions or billions. But knowing that he could acquire more and be even richer, he feels restless, unhappy. And as though putting his riches aside, he is all step, all works, all words, all eyes for the other riches he would like to acquire. Poor one, how can he be happy, peaceful, if he lacks the source of goods that says to him, Rest, everything is yours and everything you want is in your power. Someone else is king, but how much unhappiness under that crown? Fear of losing his kingdom, hopes and yearnings to acquire more kingdoms, to rule over the whole world at the cost of wars. So possessing a kingdom is nothing other than an open way to render the poor king unhappy and restless. A third one is learned, but not possessing all the sciences, knowing that he could possess more sciences, he does not rest, nor does he feel happy and peaceful. How many times before someone else who is more learned than he is, he feels humiliated and feels the unhappiness caused by his lacking the fullness of sciences. Now the same happens in the supernatural order. Someone is good, but he does not feel within himself that he possesses the source of goodness because he feels that on some occasions his patience is weak, his firmness in good is intermittent, his charity is very often limping, his prayer is inconstant. This renders him unhappy, restless, because he sees that his goodness is not whole it is as though halved, and the other half that is missing serves to torture him and make him unhappy. 
poor one, how clearly it shows that he lacks the kingdom of my divine will. In fact, if it were reigning in him, he would possess the source of goodness that will say to him, Rest, everything is in your power. Source of patience, of firmness, of charity, of prayer. And feeling the source within himself, he would feel the sea of happiness and of peace extend inside and outside of himself. And unhappiness and restlessness would no longer find the way to enter into him. Someone else is holy but on some circumstances he does not feel within himself the source of holiness, the light that makes one know everything, that points everything out to him, the road and the happiness. The knowledge of God is not full. The heroism of the virtues vacillates in him. So, with all his holiness, he is not happy nor peaceful, because since the total dominion of my divine fiat is missing, he lacks the source of the light that eclipses the seed of all evils and substitutes it with the source of happiness and of peace. This is why, until creatures let my divine will reign, in the world, there will be not even the idea nor true knowledge of what true peace and fullness of happiness mean. All things, however good and holy, will not have their fullness, because since the dominion and the reigning of my supreme volition is missing, what communicates the source of all happinesses? is missing, which is a spring, and therefore one can take from it whatever he wants and however he wants it. This is the reason for all my cares, that my will be known and form its kingdom in the midst of creatures, because I want to see them happy, and of that happiness with which I issued them in creating them, and they were delivered from the womb of their Creator, who possesses all possible and imaginable happinesses. After this I was following the Holy Divine Will, and feeling myself without my sweet Jesus, I was raving, for I wanted He, who making me agonize, was making me experience the hardest martyrdom, such that I could endure no more. And my always lovable Jesus, coming out from within my interior, told me, My daughter, the martyrdom of the soul is greater, more noble, and contains a value so great, that compared to that of the body, oh, how this one remains behind. The martyrdom of the body is limited. It is small before that of the soul. The soul is light, while the body is matter. And as the body is martyred, the blood that it sheds does not expand, does not diffuse far away, but wets only that little space of earth on which it finds itself. Therefore, its effects are limited and circumscribed to places, to time, and to people. On the other hand, that of the soul is light, and when this light is filtered, 
placed under a press. The light diffuses. It rises. It extends more and more. Who can restrict and circumscribe the light of the sun? No one. Who can ever prevent its solar rays from investing the entire earth? and making its heat felt by all. No one. There is no power against the light. There are no weapons that can wound it and kill it. All powers together are powerless against the light. Whether they want it or not, they are forced to give it its course and let themselves be invested by it. And if anyone taken by madness should think of stopping it with a power that is all its own and natural for it, the light would laugh at him and winning would spray him with more light. Now the soul is more than sun and when she suffers my privation as she goes around and is crushed under its press. So many more rays does she acquire to extend and expand more. And since this is a pain of a divine life, by doing the divine will in this martyrdom, the soul offers the most beautiful act, and her light extends so much that no one can reach her because it is a divine will that enters into this martyrdom caused by the privation of your Jesus. Matter does not enter at all into this martyrdom, but everything is light. Light is your Jesus. Light is my will. Light is your soul and they form such an enchantment of light that heaven and earth are invested by it, bringing the benefit of the heat and of the light to all. Therefore, the martyrdom of the body is nothing compared to this. September 4th, 1927 how all creation is invested by the acts done in the divine will. I was following my round throughout the whole creation, and I had invested heavens, sun, sea, and some all created things. With my I love you, I adore you, I bless you. To sing glory to my Creator in all creation. Now while I was doing this, my sweet Jesus moved within me and told me, My daughter, listen together with me to all the harmonies of creation. Listen. The sea murmurs, but in that murmuring a more beautiful note can be heard. The I love you, the I adore you, the I bless you. The glory that the little daughter of my will murmurs together with the sea, and making the whole sea murmur, she makes the waters speak her loving refrains to her creator. Oh, how the sea acquires new notes of harmony, of beauty, new sounds more beautiful because my little daughter emits her voice in my divine will and renders the sea speaking and gives the glory of the sea to her creator listen the sun too in its light that rains down from the heavens and invests the whole earth pours your loving notes together with it, 
your welcome refrains. I love you. I glorify you. I bless you. I adore you. In fact, since the divine will that reigns in you is one with what reigns in the sun, oh, how eloquently does the light speak! How the love of her creator flows in the heat! How many new harmonies and notes that are not its own it acquires because there is the little daughter of the supreme will who emits her acts in it and making her will one with that of all creation she administers her voice and her acts to all created things listen the nature of the sea of the sun do not have the virtue of speaking and to find one who lives in my will and communicates her voice her acts to them is the most amazing thing it is the greatest glory that you can give to your creator so there is not one created thing that is not invested by your acts. And I delight in listening to your notes and to your repeated refrains in the heavens, in the air, in the wind, in the water that rains down, in the little bird that sings, in everything. And I want that you too, together with me, hear your own harmonies that you form in the whole creation. My daughter, the littlest motion, even the littlest breath done in the divine will, is all of God. And because it is his own, he finds in it everything that is his. In the act done in my divine fiat, he finds divine sanctity. He finds his light. He finds his goodness, his love, his power. That act lacks nothing of what belongs to God. Therefore, they can be called divine acts that are the most beautiful, the holiest, and the most welcome. And before these acts, all other acts, as good as they may be, lose their value, their taste, and can never please me. It happens as to a lord who is extremely rich, he possesses riches, gardens, farms with the most beautiful fruits that no one can equal. Now, since this Lord knows that no one else has fruits and good things like his own, if his sons or his servants bring him the fruits of his own gardens, he appreciates them. He enjoys them with love eating of them to his fill. But if they bring him fruits from someone else's farms, he will not enjoy them, because he will immediately notice the great difference. He will find them defective, unripe, and disgusting, and will lament to his own, for they dared to bring him things and fruits that are not his. The same happens to us. Everything that is done in our divine will is our own. The fruits of our boundless farms. And because they are our own things, we find nothing in them 
that is unworthy of our divinity, and therefore we take all delights in receiving them. On the other hand, what is done outside of our divine will is something extraneous to us. It lacks the divine imprint. It is without the fullness of tastes, of light, of sanctity, of sweetness. Even in the best things, the human will always puts the unripe part that ruins the taste of the most beautiful things. And so, seeing that those are not things from our farms, the fruits of our divine will, we put them aside and many times we do not even look at them. Therefore, I recommend to you, let nothing escape you that does enter the light of my supreme fiat, so that everything may be our own and highly pleasing to us. September 8th, 1927 how all creation is fixed in God and is the relator of the Supreme Being. The sorrow suffered in a divine way in Jesus and in Mary. Meaning of the Forty Days in the Desert I continue my flight in the supreme volition that keeps all creation as though in the palm of its hand, and I am forced to hover from one created thing to another, to trace all that glory that I can give to my Creator through them, and to requite Him with my love for everything He has done for love of me and of all. Now while I was doing this, my beloved Jesus moved in my interior and told me, My daughter, when our divinity created the whole creation, it left it all bound within itself. So it can be said that the heavens keep their relation with God, are fixed in God, and from within God they spread their immensity. The stars are bound in God, and from within God they adorn with gold the vault of the firmament. In God is the sun bound, and from the divine bosom it spreads its light that invests the whole earth. There is not one created thing that does not have its links in God. And while they come out, they do not separate from God. God is jealous of his acts, and he loves them so much that he does not permit that they be separated from him. Therefore he keeps them all fixed within himself as perennial glory of his own acts, as relators of his being to creatures that, with mute voice, speak with facts of he who created them and tell with facts that he is most pure and endless light, love that is never extinguished, I that sees everything, hears and penetrates everything. The sun says this. Created things also say, look at us, and with facts we will tell you. This is why we do not speak, because facts are greater than words. He is power that can do anything, he is immensity that envelops everything. He is wisdom that orders everything. He is beauty that enraptures everything. The creation is the continuous narration of the Supreme Being from whom it receives continuous life. And as you go around from one created thing to another, 
you remain bound through them to your Creator, and you receive the relations of light, of love, of power, and so forth, that each of them possesses. On hearing this, I said, My love, the created things do not have reason. How can they give me their relations and give you so much glory? And Jesus added, My daughter, created things are in relationship with me and are bound to me like the members to the head. See, you have hands and feet. These do not have reason, nor do they speak. But because they receive life from the head, the hands operate, the feet walk, remaining at the disposal of what the head wants and forming its greatest glory. Only if hands and feet are severed from the body, then would they have neither works nor steps, because they would lose the life that the head communicated to them. So it is with the whole creation. Even though created things have neither reason nor speech, because they are united with God, like the members to the body, they receive life from their Creator, and therefore all created things are operating. Their acts are incessant and are at our disposal, more than are your members at the disposal of your head. And just as your hands have the virtue of communicating your works to other creatures, so do created things have the virtue of communicating the good they possess to creatures. And to one who lives in my divine will. Because the will that animates them is one with that of this soul, they feel that she belongs to the body of the whole creation. And therefore they communicate to her all the relations that they have with the head. And with great love, they bind her to themselves. Therefore, be constant in living in my divine will. If you want to live communal life with your Jesus and with all creation, and give me all the glory that all my works give me incessantly. After this, I was following the holy divine volition in the act in which my sweet Jesus separated from the sovereign queen to go into the desert. And while compassionating both one and the other, I thought to myself, how could the sovereign queen separate from her dear son for as many as forty days? She who loved him so much, how could she endure being without him? I, who do not have her love, suffer so much for a few days that he deprives me of himself. What must it have been for my mamma? Now, while I was thinking of this, my adored Jesus moved in my interior and told me, My daughter, we both suffered in separating from each other, but our sorrow was suffered in a divine way, not in a human way, and therefore it did not separate either from happiness or from imperturbable peace. Happy, I departed for the desert. Happy, the height of my celestial mamma stayed. In fact, the sorrow suffered in a divine way has no virtue of shading even slightly the divine happiness that contains endless seas of joys and of peace. Sorrows suffered in a divine way are like little drops of water in the immense sea, the power of whose waves has the virtue of changing them into happiness. The sorrow suffered in a human way has the virtue of breaking true happiness and of disturbing the peace. The divine way, never. More so since my queen mamma possessed the son of my will by grace, and I possessed it by nature. So the son remained in her, 
and remained in me. But its rays did not separate, because light is indivisible. Therefore, in that same light, she remained in me and followed my acts, and I remained in her as her center of life. So the separation, while true, was apparent. In substance, we were fused together and inseparable, because the light of the divine will placed our acts in common, as if they were one alone. And besides, I went to the desert to call back that same divine will of mine that for forty centuries creatures had deserted from their midst. And I, for forty days, wanted to remain alone, to repair for the forty centuries of human will, during which mine had not possessed its kingdom in the midst of the human family. And with my very divine will, I wanted to call it back again into their midst, so that it might reign. Upon returning from the desert, I deposited it in my mamma, with all those acts of divine will that creatures had rejected, and had kept as though in a desert, so that she might be the faithful depository, the repairer, and the empress of the kingdom of my will. Only the sovereign lady could possess this deposit so great, because she possessed within herself the very divine will that could contain the will deserted by creatures. How could we occupy ourselves with our sorrow of being separated for forty days, when it was about reintegrating about calling back our divine will to reign in the midst of creatures. In our sorrow we were more than happy, because we wanted to place the kingdom of the supreme fiat in safety, and the celestial queen was waiting with yearnings for my return in order to receive the deposit of the new sun, so as to requite with her love all of its acts that the human ingratitude had rejected. She acted as true mamma to my divine will, acting as true mother also for creatures, impetrating for all the life, the happiness, the joy of possessing the kingdom of the eternal fiat. My daughter, the number of forty days is symbolic and significant in my life down here. When I was born, for forty days I wanted to remain in the grotto of Bethlehem, symbol of my divine will that while being present in the midst of creatures was as though hidden and outside of the city of their souls. And I, in order to repair for the forty centuries of human will, wanted to remain outside of the city for forty days, in a miserable hut, crying, moaning, and praying to call back my divine will into the city of souls, so as to give it its dominion. And after forty days, I went out to present myself to the temple and reveal myself to the holy old Simeon. He was the first city I was calling to the knowledge of my kingdom. And his joy was so great that he closed his eyes to the earth to open them to eternity. Forty days I spent in the desert and then, immediately, I did my public life to give them the remedies and the means in order to reach the kingdom of my will. For forty days I wanted to remain on earth after my resurrection to confirm the kingdom of the divine fiat and its forty centuries of kingdom 
that it was to possess. So in everything I did down here, the first act was the restoration of the kingdom. All other things entered into the secondary order. But the first link of connection between me and creatures was the kingdom of my will. Therefore, when it is about my will, I hold nothing back, neither light, nor sacrifices, nor manifestations, nor happiness. They are seas that I release from myself so as to make it known, to make it rain, and to make it loved. September 14th, 1927 How God is Jealous of the Acts that are Done in the Divine Will Grace is the bilocated life of God. How our Lord calls the soul to follow his acts. I was all abandoned in the divine fiat, and in it I was doing my acts. An endless sea made itself present before my mind, and I, inside that sea, formed my own tiny little sea with my act. It was as if the waters would sink deeper and would expand, rising around me like a circle, to give me the space in which to put my acts in the middle of the sea, so as to let me form my own little sea within that very sea. I remained surprised in seeing that the sea, while it seemed it was made of water, was made of light and its huge waves formed the most beautiful enchantment, the sweetest and most gentle murmuring, more than music. And my sweet Jesus coming out from within my interior told me, My daughter, the soul who operates in my divine will, operates in God himself, and her acts remain in him. The sea that you see is the Supreme Being, who, jealous of anything holy that can be done in my volition, extends the endless sea of his being around the soul in order to receive her acts, and he keeps them within himself as the soul's tiny little sea of her acts done in his divine will. Our satisfaction and love for one who lives in our divine volition is such and so great that as we see her operate, we lower ourselves to her, forming a circle around her to let her operate within ourselves. And she rises up to us, and her acts take their place together with our acts, delighting us and glorifying us as we delight and glorify ourselves. After this, I was following the divine will in everything it has done in creation to then follow the acts of redemption. And my adored Jesus made present to me what he had done in coming upon earth, and I followed him step by step and following his tender age in the act in which he would cry and suckle milk in the arms of the sovereign queen, I said to him, My pretty little one, I want to invest your tears with my I love you, to ask you in each one of your tears for the kingdom of your divine will, and in each drop of milk that our celestial mamma gives you, I want to let flow my I love you, so that while she nourishes you with her milk, I may nourish you with my love, to ask you, in each drop of milk you take, for the kingdom of your divine fiat. 
Then I said to my mamma, Say together with me, I want the kingdom of your will in each drop of milk I give you, in each tear and wailing of yours, in each one of my kisses that I impress on your beautiful and charming face. When it is said by you, Jesus will give his kingdom. And the sovereign lady made me content by saying it together with me. And my sweet Jesus told me, My daughter, in each act that my celestial mamma did for me, and they were continuous, I repaid her with a degree of graces, because I do not let myself be beaten, nor surpassed by the acts of creatures. I am the insuperable. Therefore, if my dear mamma gave me love, acts, steps, words, I, in each degree of grace, gave her a divine life, because grace is nothing other than the bilocated life of God that gives itself to creatures. What great difference between an act that a creature can give and a divine life that God gives at each of their acts. So the Queen of Heaven was immensely rich, with so many divine lives that she received at each instant, and she used them to form the cortege, to honor, to love with divine lives, her son, her Jesus, her all. You must know why I now call you, and now make present to you everything I did in my life while being on earth, showing you how now I cry and shiver with cold. Now I remain in the arms of my mamma, repeating those baby acts of suckling milk, of wetting her maternal hands with my tears, of kissing each other, and so forth. It is because I want your acts, your love, together with that of my mother, and that all my acts be followed by your acts so that I may give to you, too, as many degrees of grace for as many acts as you do for me. And this, for the decorum, honor, and cortege of my will that wants to form its kingdom in you. My will is not inferior to my humanity, and therefore it deserves the same honors that my inseparable mamma gave me. And this is why I want your acts following mine, that I may give you my divine life as many times. Therefore, be attentive and follow me faithfully. May everything be for the glory of God and for the triumph of the kingdom of the supreme fiat. Deo gratias. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 22. Fiat. <laughs>